Hey guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new. On today's video, I'm going to be sharing some beautiful Dollar Tree DIYs using their wood rounds from stunning trays to beautiful wall decor. So let's get started. The other day I was at my local Dollar Tree and they had a stack of their wood rounds on the shelves and these usually go fast at my store. So I quickly grabbed a handful cause I had some fun ideas for them. So for this project, I'm going to be using two wood rounds and I'm going to cut one in half. So I use a ruler to mark the approximate center on one of them. And then I just score it several times with a utility knife until it cuts in half. And these aren't really difficult to cut through. I'll also be using some nautical rope and some wooden craft cubes, which I got at Dollar Tree. So I hold up the semicircle in front of the uncut round and I mark the height. And this will be my guide just to make sure I don't glue the cubes beyond this point. First, I glue two cubes together and I'll make two sets. One thing about these cubes, the height can vary depending which side is up, so you can always double check on that before gluing. You can just keep rotating them until the heights match up. I glue one on each end just below the mark line, about a quarter of an inch down, and I just position it to go along the curve of the circle. I grab the nautical rope and I glue one end just below a cube and I apply the hot glue along the bottom curve edge gluing the rope onto that until I reach the other cube. When I get to that end, I just mark it and trim that piece off. If it frays too much, you can just add a little glue on the end. And then I glue another layer of the rope on top of that. I do the same thing, apply the hot glue, this time on top of the rope, and then I just glue it along the bottom curve. And I'm going to do this a total of four times, which should just about match the height of the cubes. The cut semicircle is going to be glued on top of that, but the rope is going to make the base of the pocket. I'm going to add some color using a couple acrylic paints that I got at Dollar Tree. I'll be mixing deep brown and black and adding some water to thin it out so that it goes on like a stain. Usually a one to one ratio of water to paint, and then I just adjust from there. I brush on the paint and then I gently wipe it out before it dries and that way you can still see the beautiful wood grain shining through. This is a very easy and inexpensive hack to get that staining effect on wood without having to deal with the toxic elements while you're waiting for it to dry and you still get such beautiful results. For the half round, I wanted it to be a little darker so I just added a little more black to the mixture. But after wiping it out, it wasn't as dark as I wanted, so I darkened it up even more, and I love the way it turned out. It looked like a dark walnut stain. Next, I glue down the half round on top, placing it towards the bottom. I'm using a multi-surface glue, and I do clamp it with these Dollar Tree clothespins that have just the right amount of tension. And with a dowel, I push down the rope to make sure it lines up nicely along the curve so that everything looks flush. But you can certainly use hot glue as well. I put the string back on, place some stems inside, and this DIY is done. For the next DIY, I'll be using one wood round, which is going to be placed behind this grapevine wreath, kind of like a backdrop. I got this at Michael's and it was quite inexpensive. I want the wood to have a whitewash finish, but since the wood is light, I'm going to darken it first. I'll be mixing a couple acrylic paints from Apple Barrel, Khaki and Territorial Beige. So I mix these two together and I add a little bit of water so that I can apply it like a stain. So I brush that on top of the round and then I wipe it down before it completely dries so that you can still see the wood grain underneath. And once that is completely dried, I mix together some white acrylic paint and water to make a whitewash stain. I start with a one to one ratio of water and paint and then I just adjust it. But the more water, the thinner and less opaque it will be. So I just brush that on with a foam brush. I do about half and then I wipe it down. And then I do the other half wiping down the paint before it dries. I decided to do another layer just to lighten it up even more. So I brush that on and then I wipe it down before it dries. And lastly, I dry brush some white acrylic paint. I make sure to dab off some of the paint and then I lightly brush over the wood in random areas. I also like to gently push the foam brush forward like so, 
just to have it look a little more weathered here and there. I did go a little heavy on the edges as I was testing out the tension, but the wreath will be covering up those parts. Lately, my local Dollar Tree has been carrying such beautiful flowers and greeneries. Now, the ones I do like always goes fast, but I did manage to get a couple of these rosemary bouquets with pink flowers, and I'll be embellishing the wreath with these. To secure the wood behind the wreath, I'm not really going to use too much hot glue. I'm more than likely going to be reusing the wreath, so I'm going to be using the string hanger on the round to secure it onto the wreath. Of course, you can certainly just hot glue it in place, and that will keep it from moving. So for the rosemary, I'm just going to tuck it inside the wreath. I bend it a bit and then I position them opposite each other like so, with a little space in between. I also position them a little more towards the bottom right. And then I pull out some of these little yellow flowers from this Dollar Tree bouquet, and I glue those right in the middle. I'm going to be placing this wooden home sign from Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of two. I painted it black and I sanded the edges of the letters to distress it a bit. I also made a little bow from this Dollar Tree lace ribbon. I really didn't want to put a large bow on the wreath, so the size was perfect. So I glue that right on top of some leaves, and then I glue the word down right on the wood. And this DIY is done. For the next DIY, I'm going to be using one wood round from Dollar Tree and this wooden rectangle hanging shelf from Dollar Tree as well. It came with a metal ring and some rope, but I'm just going to be using the shelf portion. I paint the wooden shelf white. I'm just using white acrylic paint from Apple Barrel and I brush that on with a foam brush. And with a coarse grit sandpaper, I sand all around the edges to expose some of the wood and then a little bit here and there in random areas. I'm going to make this into a sign, and I did have a large decal from Dollar Tree that I thought would look good. This came in a pack of two with different wordings. I like the large black letters, but I had a hard time working with this last time, so I will definitely try it again some other time. But I did go to my Cricut, and I printed out Welcome to Our Home. I get that on the transfer tape, and I place that right in the center of the wood. I apply some Waverly Antique Wax on the round, thinned out with some water, and I'm just applying it like a stain with a little rag on the wood round. And whatever's left, I just rub that along the edges of the rectangle wood to darken up the wood and make it look a little bit worn. Alright, on to the next step. To attach the sign to the wood round, I apply a bit of hot glue on the back of the sign and I carefully lay it down on the round. I position it slightly more towards the bottom than the center because I'll be placing some flowers on top and I just want a little more room to do that. I'll be using these lavender stems from Dollar Tree, it's so pretty, and these greeneries which I believe I got from Target. So I arrange them like so with the greenery in the front and the lavenders in the back. To hold them together, I use jute string and I just simply wrap it around the center. I want to add a bow in the center and I'm going to use some extra fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut three strips about 13 to 14 inches in length and about an inch to an inch and a half in width. On one of them, I'm going to cut out about an inch or so off. I want it to be a little shorter than the other and then I just fold it over and glue the ends together. I do the same thing with the other strip, making sure it's longer than the other. I fold it over and glue the ends together. And then with the wider fabric stacked on top of the shorter, I place them on top of the last strip and then I just tie a knot just one time. I don't want it to be too bulky and then I just adjust it. This is going to be the tail of the bow. I wanted the edges to look a bit frayed so I just pull out some of the threads to get that look. To cover up the holes on the signs, I'm going to be trimming out and placing these bamboo sticks on top. I stain them with the antique wax and then I dry brush some white acrylic paint over that. And then I trim them and glue them down. So it covers up the holes and also adds a nice little detail as well. I apply some hot glue on the stems and place that down on top and then I glue down the bow in the center. And this DIY is done. For the final project, I'm going to be making a simple rustic wooden tray and I'm going to paint it with this deco art paint in the shade Seaside Blue. Now this is such a beautiful high durability paint 
it paints so nicely in wood. But because it was such a thick paint, it actually broke my foam brush. This came in a pack from Dollar Tree, but honestly, I might have just gotten a bad batch because this was the third brush that broke today. So after I switched to a better brush, I apply the paint all over, and I do want it to be completely opaque. But once it was completely dried, I kind of had second thoughts about keeping it as it was. It looked stunning, and it was definitely an option to leave it painted. However, I ultimately chose to sand it down and give it a weathered look. So I took it out to sand, and I'll show you how it turned out in a moment. Now you're also going to need about 57 to 58 tumbling tower blocks, which are going to make the sides of the tray. And to hold up the wood round base, I'm going to use about the same amount of wood cubes. I did make a similar tray not that long ago with the blocks spread out. This one is going to have the blocks closer to one another side by side. Now the height of the cube can vary depending on which side is facing up. So just make sure to double check that the heights are the same. So I glue the cube on one end of a block and I'm going to repeat that for the remaining blocks. I want this to have a rustic finish, so I mix some antique wax with water, and this will remove the shine and give it a nice rustic finish. So here's the wood round all sanded, and now it's time to put everything together. I place a few blocks all around to hold it up first, which aren't glued yet. Now you can use your preferred glue. I actually start off with wood glue and I do about four or five at a time. I apply the glue on the cubes and then I push them into place. And this way I have a little more time to adjust if needed. If you want the blocks to fit nicely next to each other, you will need to leave a small gap between them. Otherwise, the size of the cubes will make it hard for the blocks to follow the curve of the wood. If the blocks aren't sticking well because the cube's slightly shorter, then I'll use the hot glue, which adds a little padding. I do add some weight on top of the wood round as I go around, and I just continue gluing until the sides are completed. Once everything was done, I did turn it over and secure the blocks even more with some hot glue. And this DIY is done. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week. Until next time, bye!